This is episode 5 of Shark Lore. How the episodes will go is I'll discuss each species within a family per episode. I'll provide maximum length, how deep they can swim, their diet, mode of reproduction, and any other additional facts that are worth discussing. So this episode we'll be discussing the squaliform sharks, otherwise known as the oily sharks. Honestly, I couldn't really come up with a common characteristic with all of them because there are about 130 species of them, making them the second largest family. So this isn't even the largest. Um, so some of the main characteristics would that they typically have a lot of squalene oil inside of their livers, and many of them resemble the shape and appearance of a cigar. So we'll start off with the spiny dogfish, the most well-known, or squalus acanthius. They get their name from having two spines that stick out of their dorsal fin. If they're poked, it will actually shoot out a venom, which is pretty unique for a shark to be venomous. And these sharks are the perfect specimens that are used for dissective research. So I myself have dissected one in my zoology class senior year of high school. They grow up to around four feet in length and dwell down to around 2,300 feet. They eat small bony fish and cephalopods and have ovoviviparous reproduction with the gestation period taking up to two years. And these sharks only produce between two to 11 pups. They are important animals because of the oil in their swim bladders known as squalene. It's not just used for buoyancy, but it also boosts the immune system, making wounds heal fast and rarely ever getting sick. The oil has been used to treat skin, but has also been misled to help treat serious diseases such as HIV and cancer. This shark is also one of the three known shark species to be found in a so-called biologically dead River Thames in England, and squalling is the likely reason how it was able to survive in such a toxic, toxic and contaminated river. So its counterpart is the northern spiny dogfish, or Squalus graffini, and the only information known is that it grows up to just under three feet, and was found around 3,117 feet, and was previously thought to be a spiny dogfish but there are some minor tweaks that makes it a different species. The Pacific spiny dogfish was recently separated from the spiny dogfish as well and are still one of the most abundant sharks in the world. It may have to do with them being as old as 100 years old and they grow up to 4.3 feet in length and their diet consists of bony fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans with ovoviviparous reproduction with around 1 to 20 pups. The Kermatic spiny dogfish or Squalus raulensis is found in the Kermatic Islands of New Zealand and grows up to 2.2 feet in length and swims down to around 1,050 feet. The Genies dogfish or Squalus clarke grows up to 2.3 feet in length and resembles a short spine spur dog and was recently discovered in 2018 off the Gulf of Mexico. The Brazilian white-tailed dogfish, or Squalus albicatus, grows up to 21 inches and swims down to around 1,381 feet. The northeastern Brazilian dogfish grows up to 2.3 feet and swims down to 1,965 feet and is known as Squalus bahiensis. The Cuban dogfish, or Squalius cubensis, grows up to 3.6 feet in length, swims down to 1,246 feet, and feeds on bony fish and invertebrates with ovoviviparous reproduction with around 10 pups. And this species also has large isopod parasites that will commonly be found in the eyes. The Atlantic lobefin dogfish grows up to 2.1 feet and was found off of the Brazil and Argentina coast with the name Squalus lobularis, and that's pretty much all that is known about it. The humpback western dogfish, or Squalus quasimodo, was found off the coast of Brazil and 
They have a large hump on their backs and grows up to 2.8 feet, giving it that Quasimodo scientific name. The long-nosed spur dog, or Squalus Blainville, grows up to 3.3 feet in length and swims down to around 2,624 feet. The Japanese short-nosed spur dog, or Squalus breviostris, grows up to 2.2 feet and swims down to 426 feet. The diet is unknown and it's perceived to have ovoviviparous reproduction and is found in southern Japan and the South China Sea. The eastern hyphen spur dog or Squalus albifrons is found off of Queensland, Australia, grows up to 2.2 feet in length, swims down to 1,673 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. The western hyphen spur dog or Squalus altipinus was found off of Western Australia. Their depth is also around 1,673 feet, and the diet is also unknown. The big head spur dog grows up to just under three feet, is known as Squalus bucephalus, and swims down to around 2,625 feet with diet and reproduction currently unknown. The green eye spur dog, or Squalus chloroculus, is found off southeastern Australia, grows up to 2.8 feet in length, and swims down to around 4,462 feet, with diet and reproduction unknown. The fat spine spur dog, or Squalus crassipinus, is found off of northwestern Australia, grows up to 22 inches in length, swims down to around 660 feet, has ovoviviparous reproduction, and an unknown diet. The Edmund Spur Dog, or Squalus Edmundsi, is found off Western Australia and Argentina, grows up to 2.3 feet in length, and swims down to around 2,788 feet. The Taiwan Spur Dog, or Squalus Formosus, grows up to 2.9 feet in length, and was accidentally found in a Tashi fish market, just completely out of accident. The Eastern long nose Spur Dog, or Squalus Grammy, is found in Northern Queensland, grows up to 2.1 feet in length, swims down to around 1,640 feet, and has ovoviviparous reproduction. The Hawaiian Spur Dog, or Squalus Hawaiian sis grows up to 2.4 feet in length and swims down to around 3,117 feet. The Indonesian short snout spur dog grows up to 2.5 feet, is known as Squalus hemipinus, swims down to around 328 feet, has a diet consisting of bony fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans, and for reproduction, they are actually viviparous with a yolk sac of around 3 to 10 pups. The Philippine Spur Dog, or Squalus Montalbani, grows up to 3.1 feet, swims down to 2,198 feet. Diet consists of bony fish, cephalopods, crustaceans, and has ovoviviparous reproduction with 4 to 16 pups. The Japanese Spur Dog, or Squalus japonicus, grows up to 2.6 feet, swims down to 984 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction. The Sequilus spur dog, or Squalus lanae, was found off the coast of the African island Sequilus and grows up to 2 feet and swims down to around 3,280 feet. The short-nosed spur dog, or Squalus megalops, grows up to 2.5 feet, with the females being much larger than the males. Their diet is primarily cephalopods, with the juveniles off, often favoring the small crustaceans, which is pretty unusual because usually the juveniles would prefer having something softer like a cephalopod, and then as they grow older would crush the harder shells of crustaceans. So this species is unusual for doing the opposite. And some specimens have even shown to have the remains of sea lions inside of them. 
and sponges and even algae found inside of their stomachs. So they're eating a lot of random crazy stuff. And they also have ovoviviparous reproduction with around two to four pups. The short-spined spur dog, or Squalus mitsukuri, grows up to 2.4 feet, swims down to 3,117 feet, primarily eats bony fishes, and has ovoviviparous reproduction. The black-tailed spur dog, or Squalus melanurus, is found off of New Caledonia near Australia. They grow up to 2.4 feet, swims down to 1,115 feet, they're ovoviviparous and primarily eat bony fish such as the lanternfish and have been studied for parasites such as the aged isopod that is commonly found inside of them. The bar tail spur dog or Squalus notocaudatus is found off of Queensland, Australia and <clears throat> the longest specimen was an immature male at two feet in length and they swam down to around 1,490 feet. The Sireno spur dog, or Squalus rancerelli, grows up to 2.7 feet and swims down to 1,345 feet and is ovoviviparous with three pups. The Western longnose spur dog, or Squalus nasatus, is found off the west coast of Australia, grows up to 1.8 feet in length swims down to 1,673 feet, ovoviviparous reproduction, and has an unknown diet. The rough-skinned spur dog, or Serhigalius asper, grows up to 3.9 feet in length, swims down to 2,000 feet, feeds on squid and bony fish, and has ovoviviparous reproduction with around 22 pups per litter. The Mandarin dogfish, or Serhigalius barbifer, grows up to 4 feet in length and swims down to 2,130 feet and likely feeds on invertebrates by detecting with their nasal barbells and has ovoviviparous reproduction with around 10 pups and is found to have 5 pups inside of each uterus to show equilibrium for reproduction. And the southern mandarin dogfish, or Squalus australis, grows up to 4.1 feet in length and swims down to 2,100 feet and resembles a catfish, as you can see in the picture. <coughs> we will now move on to the Centrophorus genus, which are the gulper sharks. So the gulper, or Centrophorus granulosus, is a pale species that grows to around three feet in length and is found in murky waters between 328 to 4,888 feet with juveniles preferring the deeper water, which is unusual for young sharks. They feed on bony fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans. And it's hard to tell the population of this species because they are very migratory and it doesn't help that their reproduction rate is one of the slowest, with the mother producing between two to 10 pups in their lifetime. And not many are produced because the eggs that do hatch into pups survive by eating the remaining fertilized eggs, which is known as oophagy. The dwarf gulper, or Centrophorus atromarginatus, <laughs> grows up to two and a half feet and swims down to 1,476 feet with an unknown diet and has ovoviviparous reproduction with only producing one pup at a time. The dumb gulper or Centrophorus harrisoni, this unfortunate name was all Harrison's doing and it's probably because about 99% of the species has been killed since 1970 from fishing and they grow up to 3.6 feet in length swims down to around 1,260 feet with a diet consisting of bony fish, cephalopods, crustaceans, and they have ovoviviparous reproduction with around one to two pups per litter. The blackfin gulper, or Centrophorus isodon, grows up to three and a half feet, swims down to 2,526 feet, 
and the diet is likely bony fish, cephalopods with ovoviviparous reproduction with around two pups per litter. The low fin gulper or Centrophorus lusitanicus grows up to 5.2 feet and swims down to 4,593 feet. The diet consists of small sharks, bony fish, crustaceans, and reproduction is ovoviviparous with up to six pups. The small fin gulper or Centrophorus malacensis grows up to 3.2 feet and swims down to 2,690 feet. Diet is small sharks, bony fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and even sea squirts, with the reproduction being ovoviviparous with around two pups. The Sacilus gulper or Centrophorus sacilorum grows up to 2.6 feet and swims down to 3,281 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The leaf scale gulper or Centrophorus squasmosis is the first, was the first gulper species described and grows up to around 5.2 feet. They swim down to 7,740 feet and feeds on bony fish and cephalopods with reproduction being ovoviviparous with up to five pups per litter. The mosaic gulper or Centrophorus tessellatus grows up to just under three feet and swims down to 2,388 feet with an unknown diet and is likely ovoviviparous. The little gulper or Centrophorus uyato grows up to 3.6 feet and swims down to 4,593 feet with a diet of bony fish and squid and has ovoviviparous reproduction with only one pup at a time. The western gulper or Centrophorus westraliensis <coughs> grows up to just under three feet and swims down to 2,460 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The southern dogfish or Centrophorus zihani grows up to 3.7 feet and swims down to 2,300 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The bird beak dogfish or Diana calcea grows up to 4.2 feet and swims down to 4,888 feet with diet consisting of bony fish and shrimp with ovoviviparous reproduction of around 12 pups per litter. The rough long-nosed dogfish, or Diana hystricosa, grows up to 3.6 feet, swims down to around 3,280 feet with an unknown diet and has ovoviviparous reproduction with up to 12 pups and oftentimes the eggs won't even hatch most of the time. The arrowhead dogfish, or Diana profundorum, <clears throat> grows up to two and a half feet and swims down to 5,826 feet. They eat bony fish, squids, crustaceans, and has ovoviviparous reproduction with five to seven pups per litter. And the long snout dogfish, or Diana quadraspinosa, grows up to 3.7 feet swims down to 2,401 feet, and the diet is primarily bony fish with ovoviviparous reproduction. Next is the bramble shark. This rare species has a weird shape with two dorsal fins near the back with no anal fin. They spend their time at around 1,000 to 3,000 feet and have an unusual purplish brown color, and they grow up to 10 feet in length feasting on bony fishes, crabs, smaller sharks, including the spiny dogfish. And for reproduction, they are aplacental viviparous, meaning that they hatch in the mother while they're given a yolk sac attached to them instead of a placenta. And the prickly shark, or Echorhinus cookie, has skin so rough that it's like petting a cactus, giving it that prickly name. They prefer the colder, shallow waters at around 300 to 2,000 feet cruising the bottom. Although the dorsal fins are like the bramble shark, they are black in color and can grow up to 13.1 feet in length. For reproduction, they are aplacental viviparous 
with one report showing a mother with 114 pups, the largest litter ever from any shark. They feed on bony fishes, cephalopods, and small sharks like the spiny dogfish and juvenile blunt-nosed six-scaled. Ironically, the adult blunt-nosed six-scaled feed on the juvenile prickly sharks. And next is the oxy-not-today, or the rough sharks. The prickly dogfish, or oxynotus bruniensis, looks very different from the prickly because of its sail-like dorsal fins and large, closely spaced nostrils. They're also much smaller, getting to only one and a half feet, and swim near the bottom between 100 to 3,501 feet, feeding on benthic invertebrates and small bony fish. For reproduction, they're aplacental viviparous with up to eight pups per litter. The angular rough shark, or Oxynotus centrina, may look just like the prickly dogfish, but in fact are very different. They get up to 4.9 feet in length and have enlarged denticles that are not seen in other sharks. They feed on worms, crustaceans, and mollusks with ovoviviparous reproduction of around 10 to 12 pups and swim between 160 to 2,170 feet around the muddy bottoms and coralline algae. The Caribbean rough shark or Oxynotus carabasis is a slow moving shark that feeds on small benthic animals, but it's unclear of what else they eat. We know that they have ovoviviparous reproduction and live at depths of around 1,480 feet and the males grow up to 1.6 feet with the females likely growing a bit larger. The Japanese rough shark, or Oxynotus japonicus, has only a handful of specimens known, but they do have ovoviviparous reproduction, they grow up to 2 feet in length, and are found at depths between 490 to 1,150 feet, and they likely feed on bony fish. And the sailfin rough shark, or Oxynotus paradoxus, grows up to 3.9 feet in length, lives at depths between 869 to 2,362 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and likely feeds on invertebrates. We will now move on to Dalatidae or the kite fin sharks. <coughs> Starting with the pygmy shark or Euprotomicris bispinatus, the second smallest shark species known at a whopping 11 inches. They are ovoviviparous, meaning the eggs hatch inside of the mother, producing around eight pups. They are jet black in color and dwell between 660 to 1,600 feet. Their diet is other tiny, creepy fish like the dragonfish, lanternfish, and squid. Since they are tiny, dark fish in the deep, dark ocean, they're extremely hard to spot for predators and humans, so not much else is really known about them. And in fact, they're so small that they even escape through the net holes when trawl fishing occurs. The small eye pygmy, or Squaliolus aliae, is another small species, ranging around 9 inches so far, found at depths between 490 to 6,580 feet, it has photophores on the ventral side to help blend in the silhouette from predators, and they feed on small squid, crustaceans, and have aplacental viviparous reproduction. The long-nosed pygmy, or heteroskimnoids merrily, grows up to 15 inches, swims down to 1,647 feet, has photophores on its underside as well, has a placental viviparous reproduction, and feeds on invertebrates and bony fishes. The spined pygmy, or Squaliolus laticatus, grows up to 11 inches in length, swims down to 1,640 feet, with photophores on its underside, has a placental viviparous reproduction, feeds on squid and bony fishes, and they are sexually dimorphic, 
with the spine exposed in males and enclosed in the females. The tail-like pygmy shark, or Euprotomicroides xantidicea, has only four specimens known and closely resembles the pygmy shark. They have a pouch gland by the abdomen which contains blue bioluminescent fluid, and reproduction is aplacental viviparous, and they have large lips, but it's not used for suction, unlike some of the other sharks coming up. The largest specimen was 20.3 inches in length and was found at depths between 640 to 2,103 feet with diet consisting of bony fish and invertebrates. <coughs> now a shark that does use their lips is the cookie cutter shark or Isistius brasiliensis. This species gets its name for cutting off circles out of large animals like a parasitic cookie cutter. This means its diet is large fish, whales, occasionally swallowing squid whole, and even submarines. Sometimes they'll produce light from their organs to attract larger animals before stabbing their backs. Their jaws are so flexible that it opens at a 180 degree angle, forming a perfect circle, and their lips are like suctions to make sure it latches on tight. They are light brown in color and have no commercial use, meaning that the species has no concern of being extinct soon. This is because they get no bigger than 22 inches, so their livers don't have as much oil, and it's probably not a good idea to use them as an actual cookie cutter. For reproduction, they're aplacental viviparous, producing around 6 to 12 pups, and another weird thing about them is that they sometimes swallow their own teeth when food isn't around. And what about that submarine I mentioned before? Well, the US Navy in 1970 had to set aside their nuclear submarines after some mysterious Russian tech destroyed their radar and microphones. They then had to put fiberglass over future submarines to make sure that the cookie cutter would never bite onto their submarines again. And the counterpart large tooth cookie cutter or Assistius plut plutotus, is actually a bit smaller at 17 inches and are found at depths between 200 to 660 feet, and they also bite chunks off of much larger animals like bony fish and marine mammals. For reproduction, they are aplacental viviparous, and the lower teeth are the biggest teeth relative to the size of any living shark. The kite fin, or Dalatius lica, is an oil-heavy species that cruises on the seafloor between 660 to 1,970 feet. Although 5.9 feet isn't very big for its max length, it is the largest vertebrate to pr display bioluminescence. And for reproduction, they are aplacental viviparous with the mother producing 10 to 14 pups. They feed on bony fishes, crustaceans, rays, marine worms, and even take on sharks that are bigger than them. And they are extremely territorial. So pretty impressive how a nearly six foot animal is able to produce light when most of them are nearly microscopic. The pocket shark or Mollusquama perini had one specimen found in 1979 and got their name from the pocket that likely contains photophores or pheromones. The female was 16 inches long, found at a depth of 1,080 feet. It likely consumes invertebrates and likely has a placental viviparous reproduction. The American pocket, or Mollusquama mississippiensis, was found off the Gulf of Mexico with one specimen known in 2010 and wasn't identified until 2013 as a separate species. It was five and a half inches long with a bulbous whale-like head and two pockets near the gill slits that contain a luminous fluid. And the specimen was virtually dissected from NOAA fisheries. Next up is the Etmotiridae or the lantern sharks. The dwarf lantern, or Etmotiridus peri, is the smallest 
is the smallest shark species that is ever known, growing to around 8 inches in length. They dwell between 928 to 1,440 feet off the coast of Colombia and Venezuela. They're aplacental viviparous, producing around two to three pups, and have no commercial use for being too small, but they can glow in the dark like a lantern. The pygmy lantern, or Etmoteris fusis, grows up to just under one feet and swims down to 1,804 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. The black belly or lucifer lantern or Etmoteris lucifer is another bioluminescent species that grows to around one and a half feet and lives at depths between 500 to 4,101 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and feeds on deep water cephalopods, crustaceans, and fish. The blackmouth lantern, or Etmoteris evansi, grows up to one feet in length, swims down to 1,804 feet, feeds on krill, small bony fish, and has ovoviviparous reproduction, spanning 2 to 20 pups per litter. The white cheek lantern, or Etmoteris alphus, was found off of the western Indian Ocean, grows up to 1.3 feet in length, prefers to swim down to around 2,598 feet, and diet and reproduction are unknown. The Velvet Belly Lantern, or Etmoteris spinax, grows up to 2 feet in length, swims down to 8,170 feet, and they get their name from their shiny black underside. Their bioluminescence is used for counter-illumination, which uses the blue-green light to camouflage. They're one of the most abundant deep-sea sharks, and they also have strong T-cells and liver proteins to withstand the concentrations of heavy metals that poison the deeper parts of the ocean. This, however, does not stop them from being heavily parasitized from barnacles, tapeworms, and nematodes. Diet progresses from krill to shrimp and squid as they grow older and bigger, and for reproduction, they're ovoviviparous with 6 to 20 pups per litter. The brown lantern, or bristled lantern with Etmoteris unicolor, grows up to 2.5 feet, swims down to 4,528 feet, feeds on crustaceans, cephalopods, and lantern fishes, has ovoviviparous reproduction with 9 to 18 pups, and a study was done in 1989 that about 23% of the population has hermaphroditism, meaning that they both meaning that they have both eggs and sperm, and some pregnant females had claspers, and one male had ovarian tissue on the left testy. The pink lantern or Etmoteris dianthus grows up to 1.4 feet in length, swims down to 2,887 feet with an unknown diet and has ovoviviparous reproduction. The green lantern shark, or Etmoteris virens, grows up to 10 inches in length, swims down to 3,002 feet and glows like, and uses their glow for counter-illumination and may potentially do that while traveling in schools so large groups for schools, and their diet specializes in cephalopods to the point of biting the eyes off of larger species. For reproduction, they are aplacental viviparous with one to three pups per litter. The Caribbean lantern shark, or Etmoteris hylianus, grows up to 11 inches, swims down to 2,352 feet, has ovoviviparous reproduction with three to five pups, and has an unknown diet. The small eye lantern, or Etmoteris lictinovi, grows up to two feet, swims down to 3,610 feet, with diet and reproduction currently unknown. The smooth lantern, or Etmoteris pusillus, grows up to 1.7 feet, swims down to 6,555 feet, with a diet consisting of squid, bony fish, and even fish eggs, 
and for reproduction is ovoviviparous with 10 pups per litter. The short fin smooth lantern or Etmoteris jungi was found off of the no northeast coast of Taiwan and all that's known is they're found at a depth of around 1,804 feet. The lined lantern or Etmoteris bolisi or Etmoteris dislineatus grows up to 1.4 feet, swims down to 2,624 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. Then there was a species with an unknown name. It's just known as Etmoteris Copagnoi. It is conspecific with the brown lantern shark, and it doesn't have a name because the founder called it a brown lantern shark, with them both growing up to 2.5 feet, and swims down to 4,265 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction. However, it is not an actual brown lantern shark, so it's never been given a real name ever since. The Marcia's Lantern, or Etmoteris Marche, was found off of the western Philippines, grows up to 9 inches in length, swims down to 1,105 feet near the sandy bottoms, and nothing else is known. The Slender Tail Lantern, or Mahler's Lantern, or Etmoteris Mahleri, grows up to 1.5 feet, swims down to 2,821 feet, with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. The comb tooth lantern, or Etmoteris decacaspiditis, grows up to 11 inches, swims down to 2,264 feet, with diet and reproduction unknown. The cylindrical lantern, or Etmoteris carteri, has the biggest specimen found at around 7 inches, but it was a male, and female sharks generally grow bigger, so it does not hold the title for the smallest shark yet. And it swims down to 1,168 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction. The Ninja Lantern, or Etmoteris benchili, was found near the South Panama, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua. They grow up to 1.7 feet in length, swims down to 4,734 feet with diet and reproduction unknown, but the white rings around their eyes and jet black body makes them stealthy like a ninja in the pitch black ocean depth. The blurred lantern, or Etmoteris bigelowi, grows up to 2.2 feet, swims down to 3,280 feet with a diet consisting of lanternfish, smaller sharks, squid, and fish eggs with ovoviviparous reproduction, and they have some beautifully glass shard teeth. The sculpted lantern, or Etmoteris sculptus, grows up to 1.9 feet, swims down to 3,356 feet. They feed on bony fish, cephalopods, shrimp, and brittle stars. The thorny lantern, or Etmoteris centosus, grows up to 9 inches, swims down to 1,640 feet, with diet and reproduction currently unknown. The splendid lantern, or Etmoteris splendidus, grows up to just under 1 feet, swims down to 1,214 feet. They specialize in squid and have ovoviviparous reproduction. The dense scale lantern, or Etmoteris pycnolepsis, grows up to 1.7 feet, swims down to 2,887 feet, with reproduction and diet currently unknown. The fringe fin lantern, or Etmoteris schultzi, grows up to just under 1 feet in length, swims down to 3,002 feet, and has thin fringes on the tip of their fins and use counter illumination to make sure other animals don't see the dark silhouette. They likely team up on squid in schools and has ovoviviparous reproduction. The tail spot lantern, or Etmoteris caudostigmus, grows up to one feet in length, 
swims down to 2,624 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The blue-eyed lantern, or Etmoteris viator, grows up to 1.9 feet in length, swims down to 4,590 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction of around 2 to 10 pups with an unknown diet. The New Zealand lantern, or Etmoteris baxteri, grows up to 2.8 feet in length, swims down to 5,315 feet, diet consists of lanternfish, cephalopods, crustaceans, even ribbon worms, and sponges, and has ovoviviparous reproduction with 10 to 13 pups per litter. The Hawaiian lantern, or Etmoteris velosus, grows up to one and a half feet, swims down to 5,282 feet, with diet and reproduction currently unknown. The Papuan lantern, or Etmoteris samadiae, was found near Papua New Guinea. They grow up to 10 inches, swims down to 2,575 feet, with ovoviviparous reproduction of around two pups with an unknown diet. The African lantern, or Etmoteris poly, grows up to just under one feet, swims down to 3,280 feet, with diet and reproduction currently unknown. The West Indian lantern grows up to one feet, swims down to 2,600 feet, is known as Etmoteris robinsi, with diet and reproduction unknown. The short tail lantern, or Etmoteris brachiaris, grows up to 1.7 feet, swims down to 2,950 feet, with diet reproduction unknown. The great lantern, or Etmoteris princeps, grows up to a whopping 3.1 feet, which is large for a lantern shark, and swims down to 7,260 feet, with reproduction and diet being unknown. The false lantern, or Etmoteris pseudosqualiolis, grows up to one and a half feet, swims down to 3,838 feet, with reproduction and diet unknown. The broadbanded lantern, or Etmoteris gracilispinus, grows up to 1.1 feet, swims down to 3,937 feet. They feed on bony fish, cephalop cephalopods, shrimp, and has ovoviviparous reproduction. The broad snout lantern, or Etmoteris burgessi, grows up to 1.3 feet in length, swims down to 1,968 feet, with diet and reproduction unknown. The southern lantern, or Etmoteris granulosus, grows up to 2.8 feet in length, and swims down to 5,315 feet. They feed on lanternfish, cephalopods, shrimp, ribbon worms, and sponges. They use counter-illumination and has ovoviviparous reproduction with around 10 to 13 pups. And unfortunately, they get several parasites such as monogenes, digenes, trematodes, nematodes, and copepods. The rasp-toothed dogfish, or Etmoteris shikoi, grows up to 1.4 feet, swims down to 1,214 feet, with reproduction being ovoviviparous and an unknown diet. The hook-toothed dogfish, or Asuliola nigra, grows up to just under two feet, swims down to 1,837 feet, with a diet consisting of bony fish and invertebrates, with ovoviviparous reproduction of around three pups. <coughs> The high fin dogfish, or Centrocilium excelsum, grows up to 2.1 feet, swims down to 3,280 feet, with reproduction and diet unknown. The white fin dogfish, or Centrocilium riteri, grows up to 1.4 feet, swims down to 3,610 feet, with diet and reproduction unknown. The black dogfish, or Centrocilium fabrici, grows up to two and a half feet, swims down to 7,380 feet, and they team up in schools on bony fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans with a placental viviparous reproduction 
with 4 to 40 pups per litter. The granular dogfish, or Centrocilium granulatum, is the largest specimen being 10 inches in length and was found around 1,476 feet and is noted for having unusually large nostrils and spiracles. The bearskin dogfish, or Centrocilium kamahari, grows up to just under 2 feet in length and swims down to 3,937 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The comb-toothed dogfish, or Centrocilium nigrum, grows up to 1.6 feet in length, swims down to 3,838 feet. Diet consists of bony fish and invertebrates with ovoviviparous reproduction. The ornate dogfish, or Centrocilium ornatum, grows up to just under 1 feet in length, swims down to 4,140 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. And the viper dogfish, or Trigononathus cabea, is a very creepy fellow that grows up to 1.7 feet in length and swims down to 1,180 feet, and they protrude their jaw to trap large bony fish and crustaceans with their needle-like teeth and swallow them whole like a snake. They have translucent fins and eyelids to add on to the creepiness factor. However, the big eye tuna love to eat them. And for reproduction, they're ovoviviparous with possibly up to 26 pups per litter. We are now on the Somniosidae, or the sleeper sharks, with one of my personal favorite, my second favorite species of all time, the Greenland shark, Somniosis microcephalus. Despite its cigar-like appearance that dwells in North Arctic Atlantic waters, this shark has the longest lifespan of any vertebrate, easing in an average age of 250 to 500 years old, moving at a top speed of 1.6 miles per hour, and has given the shark time to grow up to 21 feet in length, and possibly even up to 24 feet in length. It has made its tissues poisonous and lightweight to maintain buoyancy so it doesn't contain squalene oil. The poison is an antifreeze to prevent the shark from freezing. That means it's very risky for people to eat them, and they'll often get drunk when they do, unless you use a method known as hakaro, where you place the carcass in a shallow pit, put stones on top, and wait for a few months as the poison is pressed out, and Iceland finds it a delicacy, which is strange because shark meat never really tastes good, and the diet of the Greenland shark consists of fish, small sharks, eels, and mollusks, but they aren't afraid to try eating reindeer, moose, and even polar bears. The likely reason how they're able to eat land animals is that they wait for them to fall asleep near the shore, and many Greenland sharks are blind because of a parasite known as copepods. However, the parasite does not reduce their life expectancy, and it can actually help by using bioluminescence to attract the prey for the shark. Their reproduction is also extremely slow, with internal fertilization taking 8 to 18 years to produce about 10 pups, and their maturity age is... 50 plus years at least. The Pacific sleeper shark, or Somniosis pacificus, is closely related to Greenland sharks, except they are not quite as cool. They're known for living in depths of around 6,000 feet and reach up to 14 feet in length. However, it's possible that they reach up to 23 feet in length, since little is known about these deeper water sharks. At one point, we thought we were we thought the shark was the megalodon and reproduction is likely eggs hatching inside of the female or ovoviviparous reproduction with an estimate of 10 pups per litter they feed by using suction to chew up and swallow fish crustaceans porpoises and even giant squid and colossal squid they also don't have squalene oil as it would freeze up in the water and instead have the same poisonous, lightweight tissue that Greenlands have, with the same copepod parasite 
that attaches to the shark's eyes. The Portuguese dogfish, or Centroschimnus silipus, is known for being the deepest living shark in the world at a depth of around 12,057 feet. They grow to around 3.3 feet in length, feeding on cephalopods and the remains of any large fish or mammal that has sunk to the bottom of the ocean. With a placental viviparous reproduction with up to 29 pups, and has weak vision only needed to detect bioluminescence. The rough-skinned dogfish, or Centroschimnus austoni, grows up to 4.8 feet in length and swims down to 4,921 feet, and their flesh has been high, is known to be high in mercury, and their diet consists of cephalopods and bony fish with ovoviviparous reproduction with 16 to 28 pups per litter. The velvet dogfish, or Zamius squamulosus, grows up to 2.7 feet, swims down to 6,562 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. The long-nosed velvet dogfish, or Centrocelicus crepidator, crepidator, grows up to 4.2 feet in length and swims down to 4,921 feet with diet and reproduction unknown. The Japanese velvet dogfish, or Skimnodon ikeharai, is a species that was never properly measured, but was found at a depth of around 2,624 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction and an unknown diet. The large spined velvet dogfish, or Skimnodon macrocanthus, was found at the bottom of South America and New Zealand, grows up to 2.2 feet in length, swims down to 3,018 feet, with reproduction and diet currently unknown. The knife tooth dogfish, or Skimnodon ringens, grows up to 3.6 feet in length, swims down to 500, 249 feet with reproduction and diet currently unknown. Look at those teeth and that glowing green eye. The white-tailed dogfish, or Skimnodaliatis albicata, has only a few specimens known from bycatch from tuna longliners, with the biggest specimen being 3.6 feet, found at a depth of 1,640 feet, with ovoviviparous reproduction of around 59 pups per litter. The Azores dogfish, or Skimnodalitius garricki, swims down to 6,562 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction, with the size and diet being somehow unknown. The sparse tooth dogfish, or Skimnodalitius oligodon, has a specimen found at 656 feet with nothing else analyzed. This isn't even the official picture for it. Sherwood's dogfish, or Skimnodalitius sherwoodi, grows up to 2.6 feet in length with diet, depth, and reproduction unknown. The Plunkett's shark, or Skimnodon plunketti, grows up to 5.6 feet in length swims down to 5,085 feet, and schools observed show gender segregation, with the diet consisting of bony fish and cephalopods, with ovoviviparous reproduction of up to 36 pups. The little sleeper shark, or Somniosis rostratus, is a species much smaller than typical sleeper sharks at only around 4.7 feet and is even less common to encounter as it lives at depths of around 7,200 feet, with it most likely diving even deeper than that, with reproduction being aplacental viviparous with 8 to 17 pups per litter. They feed on cephalopods, but we currently don't know what else, so it's most likely bony fish. The frog shark, or Somniosis longus, has less than a dozen specimens known with the biggest one being 4.3 feet in length. They've been found as deep as 3,661 feet 
and are only different from the little sleeper by having larger eyes, more spiral valves in its stomach, and a longer second dorsal fin. And finally, the southern sleeper shark, Somniosus antarcticus, is the forgotten sleeper that looks like a smaller version of the Greenland shark. And you would be right. It grows up to 14 feet in length, living in various spots in the southern hemisphere at depths of around 1,300 to 3,600 feet with ovoviviparous reproduction. And the diet is most likely deep sea squid and sometimes even giant and colossal squid they have even been seen eating birds despite its sluggish nature, and they likely ambush them when they are injured or asleep. So with that out of the way, we have finally gotten done with the second largest family of sharks. You'll notice in future episodes, when I get to the largest family, it will be split up into multiple parts because this was truly exhausting to do. But so... Thank you for watching if you are still here and